We want to get this party started and we want to get right into our presentation this evening. But before we begin, I know the majority of you because we're all Toastmasters here this evening. Are there any non Toastmasters here this evening? No, okay. So we're all Toastmasters. Those devices of meeting distraction, if you haven't put them on silent or just turned them off at this point, would you please do so so we don't interrupt our presenters this evening? And if your cell phone goes off during the meeting, we're going to confiscate it and we're going to auction it off at the Spring Conference 2019. Oh, no, I need a phone. Do you? Okay. All right. Anybody have an SA or an iPhone 10? We're taking donations. So I'm glad that you all came this evening. We're going to get this going right away. I'm going to introduce our president, Roger Matthews, with opening comments and to welcome you all. So please help me welcome our club president, Mr. Roger Matthews. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad to have you here tonight for Toastmasters on Purpose and this special event. I'd like to take just a moment to welcome all of our special guests. And I'd like to just start really quick and go around the room for and just have you introduce yourself and your club. And we'll go really, really fast so that uh, we don't get bogged down and take our meeting time. So I'm going to start right over there. I'm Lauren Jenkins. I'm the VP of Ed of West Urban Club 930 in LaGrange Park. Fantastic. All right. Glad to have you. I'm Claire Donovan, West Urban. That's what she said. Okay. Here. Sider, West Urban. Oh, good. good. Melissa. Melissa, the uh, BPPR of West Suburban. Okay, Rob. BP membership, West Suburban. Wow, you guys are well represented. You know this isn't a TLI, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Suzanne. Suzanne Dixon of Peloton and Tops. Yes. And our newest member of Top. Okay. President, Fox Valley Toastmasters. Right in. I'm Roger Sutton, Hazel Wagner. I'm in this one and one in California. So I do it too, also. Okay. Awesome. Larry. Larry New, I'm with Bill Probe Speakers. I'm the president. Paul Fossil, Palatine Toastmasters, Vice President of Education. Mm -hmm. Arlene Fossil, Palatine Toastmasters, also Area Free Director. And then both. Yeah. Satish Tripathi, Motorola Solutions. Very good, Satish. Joe. Uh, Joe Davis with uh, Career Communicators, the VP. And Tony. Uh, Tony Livernoy, Mount Prospect Toastmasters, Northwest Suburban Toastmasters, and Talk of the Town of Octavia. And Pathways Guide. Pathways Ambassador. Ambassador. Okay. Kelly. Kelly Papadopoulos, VP of Mount Prospect 1500. Okay. Excellent. Do that go? James DeVell, I'm with the Somburg Area Toastmasters, the VP of the group. Sri Taloui, uh, I'm from the Harper College Toastmasters. Rick Westcott, Cummins House, and Toastmasters, 5342496, and I'm the VP. <laughs> I'm Jeanette Vanderovich, and I am with the Sears Toastmasters Club, and VP of Education. I'm Tom Gore, also with Sears Toastmaster, I'm the Sergeant at Arms. Marianne Reichel, close to the Fox, District 54, I'm treasurer, and I'm also chief club ambassador in Valerie's Counterpart in District 54. I'm Neil Fuddle. I am VP of Ed of both Masters of Opportunity and DuPage Valley Toastmasters. And our best group. Last but not least. Cummins Allison, Toastmasters, and the VP of PR. Her name is Heidi. <laughs> How do I have to give my name? Yeah. My name is Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Monica Ronzi, I'm president of Cummins Ellis and Toastmasters. Very good. Well, we're delighted to have you all here, and we'd like to just jump right into our meeting because we've got a lot to do tonight. Just for a quick reminder, these proceedings will be taped, and this section will be made available to everybody publicly tomorrow morning. Okay, very good. Thank you, Tim. And now for our Toastmaster of the Evening, Ms. Joanne Kelly. How wonderful 
to see all these bright, shining faces, and we'll all learn a lot tonight. I'm proud to introduce Valerie Fusan, who's going to head the panel. Valerie is a member of Toastmasters since 1996. She earned the Distinguished Toastmaster Award, and she is the Chief Ambassador for Pathways, with a team of 30 Pathway Guides and <coughs> Ambassadors. She is also a certified world-class speaking coach and trainer and licensed master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming. Say that in one sentence. <laughs> Valerie conducts workshops for business professionals on speaking and storytelling using improv and NLP techniques. In today's session, Valerie will facilitate the panel on pathways. Please welcome Valerie Fusan. Your new member, not the guests, but the new member. 
Now it's it'll be a little special then. Because, uh, otherwise, you can probably order this. I don't know. We don't have anything at the store yet that we can purchase. But this might be something that you can order for the new members. So this is something. If you haven't read it, read it, please, because it really it has a lot of information in here. It's self-explanatory, so you don't have to stand and explain the whole process to a new member, because it can get a little confusing. So that's why this first nine pages, ten pages, is very uh, simple to use. Is yes. it available as an ebook too? Yes. Yes. And so I would advise the president, the VPEs. If you have not sent this out to your membership, send it out digitally to them so that they can start reading it and ask them to read it. But again, it might be nice to just to find it up for a new, a new member. So now we're going to go to our panel. And I'm going to introduce first um, Virginia Bachman and Bob Roman are our guys. And we've got one more guy coming. Uh, Virginia is going to start, and let me introduce Virginia. Virginia has been a Toastmaster since 2010 and earned her Distinguished Toastmaster designation in 2013. She belongs to four, four Toastmasters clubs, two at UL, um, where she works, Look Who's Talking in Gurney, and the Advanced Club Toastmaster on Purpose. She definitely walks her talk. Virginia has completed 15 competent communicator manuals and multiple competent leader awards. Who has done that? <coughs> she believes that learning is never ending and she keeps honing her speaking and leadership skills. Virginia is also a corporate trainer specializing in leadership training and is also certified in the DISC program. She is currently a Pathways Guide and Ambassador and has been instrumental in helping members understand and begin their pathways journey. Thank you so much. One of the first things that what my club realized was that all of those wonderful membership packets that we had made were not applicable anymore, right? Well, the welcome letter listing all of the officers and when we meet and all of that good stuff was, but we had to figure out what are we going to give to our guests now that they're, they have to join Pathways. Those of us that have been Toastmasters can continue in the traditional program until June of 2020. But a brand new member has no choice. They only get pathways. So we decided that we would use a flyer that was in your packet that you received, but it will be on our club. Everything that I show you tonight is going to be on our club website tomorrow. And the first thing is a one-page flyer that Toastmasters International created, and it's an editable PDF. And the part that is editable is where it says your local club contact. And so in that place, you could put the name of your club, where you meet, first and third Wednesday, Harper College, 7 p.m., and then the person that you want them to contact when they get back home and they realize they have questions, okay? So you could have your own letter on top of that. If you need something quickly, I would recommend this. This is better than nothing, and it talks about pathways, which again is what they're going to be doing. Now the next thing that I have on the website and that we put in the packet. Ooh. It's okay. touchy. It's very touchy. Yes, it is. I'm gonna let you do that now. <laughs> so Val talked about the, the guide, and guess what? We took pages in the, from the Navigator, pages 9, 10, 11, and 12, and printed those out because this is the Toastmasters learning experience. It has the 
paragraph about each path. So it gives them a little bit of information about each path. And then it t tells them that we have the five levels. And if you could do the next slide, please. Path, and then it breaks down level one icebreaker, evaluation and feedback, research. There we go, research and implementing. So that they get an idea. Okay, so there's five levels starting with master the fundamentals, learning your style, going all the way through that. But what does that mean? What's actually involved in those? And so then. It has level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. And if you didn't already know it, level one is exactly the same in every single path. And that's important to know because where's everybody starting? Level one. So you're all your, your people are going to be doing the same thing at the same time. All right? And then the final page of this. Uh, has information about base camp and, and, um, and how you need to go and do your assessment, okay? So then the next thing that's on the website is mastering the fundamentals of level one. We think that this is important. You may not want to put this in your visitor packet. You may want to email this to your new member after they have joined to give them more details about what's in the first path. Because I have found in working with people that they get very confused because the icebreaker is not called speech number one. It's just called the icebreaker. And then you give speech number one which people get very confused when they're looking for the evaluation form because everything has its own evaluation form. And so it, it tells them exactly what they're going to be doing in path one. And I think once you get through path one, it starts to make sense. But like anything else that's brand new, path level one is a little awkward. What am I gonna be doing next? What do I do on, if I do it on paper, I have had a lot of people who have printed out the project and then they don't realize that they still have to go into the computer and do the assessment and keep clicking along or Toastmasters is never going to recognize that they have finished it. Okay, so that's an important thing. Okay, next. And then this is something that my, my co-member Eric Feinendiggen, when I put this on a double-sided piece of paper, lovingly called this the Toastmasters Pathways Placemat. <laughs> he actually laminated it. And what this is, is there are two slides, and so there are two documents that are out on our website, and it has all the components of each path. And I gave that to all of our people in, in my clubs when we did our, our first couple of intros to pathways so they could see, because I had people saying, oh, I want to do the path that where you do a blog. Every single path has that as an elective. So that's not a criteria that would be useful in selecting your path. And it's nice, even though when you take your assessment, that they recommend a path for you and then two alternates, you still want to kind of look and see what all is going to be involved and see if there are projects that you are more interested in in one path than another. But I'll tell you, a lot of the projects are in every single path with very slight differences. Level one is exactly the same, all paths. Level two only has one thing different in all of the paths. So it's either leadership or it's your communication style. Okay, so 
it's not till you get to level three that you get all the electives and start to see things being really different. Okay, so that's important to know up front and to communicate to people so that they know that they're sort of, we're all in the same boat. We're all in level one when we start. And every, that's why so many clubs are having icebreaker parties and Kim is going to talk to you about icebreaker parties. But that's a great way for clubs to get going because it's not just the new people. I, I had somebody today at a meeting say, I gave an icebreaker six months ago. Why do I have to give another one? Yes. I've given 16 icebreakers. No, now I've given 18 icebreakers because I'm in two paths. You don't have to give the same exact icebreaker that you gave way back. One of the suggestions from another district was, why not give an icebreaker that's more about why you were interested in that path and where you've been in Toastmasters and where you hope to be going. And that way, the icebreakers from the experienced members are a little bit different than the icebreakers from the new members. But we all still have to do it. Even if you do five paths, you will give five icebreakers. Okay. Then some other items that I don't have slides for that are also going to be out on our website. We're going to have a special place on our website. I've had so many people that never got a password and hadn't been going to Toastmasters that I created a little Word document because I got tired of screenshotting the same screens over and over again and telling them step by step how to get in and what the screens look like. So if you have that same problem, that's to be out there for you. This is, I also have evaluation forms. If you are a VPE, my suggestion is print out some evaluation forms. People have been forgetting to bring them because all they ever had to do before was bring their book. And they do their work online and don't realize that they need to provide an evaluation form and that just makes it very awkward. So I have some evaluation forms, I'll add more. But there's a special evaluation form for every project. But what you will notice is that only the first two paragraphs are different. Everything else in the evaluation form is exactly the same. So it's not like the CC manual where there were different questions for different projects. It will give a purpose statement. It will give the notes to the evaluator. And then the general comments have, you excel that. You may want to work on and to challenge yourself. That's it. And then every single one has a two-page grid. And it has the definitions. It kind of reminds me of the judges form for the contest, where it gives the definitions of one through five. Clarity, vocal variety, eye contact, gestures, audience awareness, comfort level, and interest. The nice thing is there's a place for comments. And it's very nice because you've got one is developing, two is emerging, three is accomplished, four excels, and five exemplary. This is wonderful, even for the icebreaker, because you're going to have some DTMs giving an icebreaker. I would hope that they would not be in the one or two. I would hope that they would be three or above in all of the categories. So that's, that's nice, but it's exactly the same for every speech. It's a lot of forms. If people want to do it electronically, they need to download the form that is separate from the project. So you can go to the, to the box that says evaluations and resources, or within the project, there's always a place where you can download the entire project and print it out for yourself if you prefer to work on paper. And there's also a separate evaluation form. That's the only one that is an editable PDF. 
So if they just downloaded their project and they hand their computer to someone to do their evaluation, they won't be able to type in it. Okay? And quite frankly, most people don't prefer to sit and type in a computer while someone is speaking. Um, so my club is going to just print out, especially up for level one, since it's the same for everybody, and have a supply of them because we just have had people not bringing them. So that is my advice to you. We will be adding more things to the site. So Val, what's it called on our site? It's got, well, it's top, top, toastmasters.org, I believe. And then, and then under Pathways Resources. Pathways Resources. So we'll email you the link. <coughs> and we will continue to put more materials out there. So feel free to go out there and borrow them and use them because it's a lot. It's a lot when everybody's in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, if the evaluations are done offline, uh, do we upload them digitally later? It may, if you're in another club? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, the nice thing about Pathways is it has its own cloud. And so you can scan anything in there. And the nice thing is it's not just for the evaluation forms. I don't know about you, but I have boxes of Toastmasters books and speeches and everything. If you have some speeches that you have really refined, you could go ahead and upload those. So if at the last minute you show up somewhere and somebody says, we lost our speaker, could you give a speech? You can download it in your tablet or your phone, do a quick review and be ready to go. So I'm told that it's an unlimited storage space, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out in a few years that it's not. But take advantage of it. But that's where you would put it. And then there's also, if you do have people who do the icebreaker prior to picking their paths, did you know you could do that? Did you know that you don't even have to have a password or sign into Toastmasters to do that? So you can direct your guests to the pathways part, you know, that one where it scrolls down forever and ever and ever, and at the bottom is the icebreaker project. They can go ahead and do that. The problem is, <coughs> if they haven't picked their path, they can't apply it to the path. There's a special form for that. And it's... They don't, they don't need that form anymore. Oh, they don't? Okay. Good. All right. They just well, have to go through the, the icebreaker. They have to go through the... the they just have to click through. They have to click through it. Okay. All right. So okay. it used to be, in the very beginning, you had to contact Toastmasters, and they had to do it for you. So We're going to take uh, okay. questions. So if you have questions, please write that down, and we'll take uh, have a Q&A at the end. But, uh, Thank you.
we wanted to talk today about um, throwing an ice baker party to get everyone to jump into pathways. And Virginia is our pathways guide for Toastmasters on Purpose. Yay, I'm so blessed. I have the Chief Ambassador, Pathways Guide, and Pathways Guide Bob Roman in our club. So it's wonderful. Because as Valerie said, I've only been here a year, and I'm not only learning the BPE job, but I'm also uh, an ambassador for Pathways for eight clubs, some corporate and some community clubs. I'm paired up with John Labby, who is the Pathways Guide. So another veteran, as governor. Uh, one of the things that we found when going around to our clubs was we found out, even though we were preparing people for the launch in February, which took place and was super smooth, thank you, Madam uh, Chief Ambassador here, um, we found out that people have not yet jumped into Pathways. So thank you, Arlene and Paul, for showing up tonight. And I have Joe over here someplace. These are my clubs I'm supporting. What we want to do is make it really, really easy for you to have a uh, icebreaker party, uh, get to know you party. Many of the people in my club, Toastmasters on Purpose, have been in Toastmasters for many, many years. I'm brand new. There's a handful of us. I call us the new kids. Joanne, <laughs> Viva, you know, Jacob. Even Z's been around longer than you know me, and he just joined. So. What, what we found is it's huge disparity. I don't know everything about everybody in my club. I want to know much more about the silver sexy fox. <laughs> if you haven't heard that speech, you've got to get on board, people. Come on. So, so first thing you need to do is talk to your members and pick a date. Okay? That's what we did in our club. We said, hey, we're going to have a big panel discussion, have some icebreaker speeches. Can't put them all in one meeting. We're going to have a second meeting. That's okay. But that way we can talk about it. Yes, I gave my icebreaker last April, but I'm a different person in the last year. Valerie read my introduction. A lot of things have changed for me, right? I can talk about all those things and a few others. So, you know, so it's fun to get to know other people in your club and engage with them. Another thing that Virginia mentioned was the sign-in process. I was just over at one of my corporate clubs spending two hours getting them to literally type in Toastmasters.org. <laughs> we help them to get their member numbers either off of your Toastmasters magazine. You can type your email in. You can ask your VPE or your president to look you, look you up on the roster. They can give it to you. You you hit forgot password. You establish a password. Now these were all IT people, and I trained them for two hours. <laughs> and I'm not good at the computer stuff, but they're really nice people, and they, they they went boom, 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 boom. They took their assessment, which is just what five or six questions, nothing, right there on the spot. I literally walked around the table with 20 people and helped each one. They got in, took the assessment, they selected their paths. I let them know that they don't have to. Uh, Pick the path that's presented to them, right? There's three. You can choose whatever you like, any 10 paths. If you have a project, you want to go into leadership, you want to be a public speaker, you want to be a team leader, whatever. So you can do any of that stuff. So those are the things that people normally would do if they're going to get into pathways. And yes, like me, you can work in the old program and in the new program too at the same time. You don't have to just stick with the old or you, you don't have to go into the new only and forget everything else. You can do a combination. So take the assessment. Level one, the first project, that's what Virginia was talking about, and she has the documents for it. It's going to be available for you. The first project is the icebreaker speech. Or, or like, like Valerie said, what you can do is skip the assessment. You can go on the, on the website. You can skip the assessment and do a standalone icebreaker. And now they've changed that little rule. You can have someone evaluate you. You can, you can, uh, you know, when you're ready, you have that thing. You can upload it. You can, you can. It's, it's going to be valid. In other words, you can do it now. So you can have an icebreaker party, a get to know you party in your club. You can have people who are there or guests do icebreakers, and you don't have to worry about oh, I have to pick a path. Which one do I do? Big decision. So then that what you want to do is do the evaluation. And that's what Virginia was showing you the evaluation form, and I passed out some of those. 
I hope I have enough. If not, there will be electronic copies. Or she said she probably has some more. Mm -hmm. um, so then what you want to do is do the, the speaker feedback form. Again, it can be online if that's what you want to do. If I'm sitting at Capital One, my corporate club where it's all, everybody's wired and they all bring their computers every time, they may want to type it in. They're all young people, you know, that's their thing, right? But if I'm, if I'm running to another club or if I'm running here, yeah, hard copy's easy. Download the PDF, fill it out online, it's editable, and then you can upload it or send it to that person. That's fine. Again, the evaluations are just for you. The evaluations for you to keep in your online <coughs> electronic profile, along with your um, speeches if you want to keep those. It's your electronic file cabinet, so you don't have to have cases of, of uh, you know, Toastmasters uh, materials at home. So, you you want to get the feedback back to the speaker. That's the key, all right? Tonight we are going to um, have a couple of speeches in our room where we're going to show you some evaluations. And you can use that form if you like, or you can take that home and you can make photocopies of it so you have it and bring it to your club. Another thing that, that uh, we'd like to do, um, other than I'm going to offer it up, I, I've offered it up to my clubs. I'm happy to come out to them and help them with whatever they need to do to, to progress. And I'm sure the other pathways, uh, guides and ambassadors will be able to do that too. But we want to make it fun. We want to make it an opportunity to engage with, with your club members. Because this is about not only building new membership by offering a new educational program and, and offering it to guests, but it's about, you know, getting to know each other and bonding. And it's about engagement and really retaining your membership. Because when people like the people that they socialize with or they are growing with, they want to stay in the club. Or maybe they want to join a second club because they enjoy it so much. So this is an opportunity to do that as well. So add refreshments, take photos. One of the things that we found in our club was we didn't have a, a banner, a photo of our banner for the banner parade at the conference. I was like, what? I'm vice president of education. Why don't I have one of these? So that's also an opportunity. Take some pictures of people in your club, put it on your website, put it on your Facebook page, you know, make it a fun event. You can even do a theme kind of thing, right? <laughs> Tell us if, if everybody's been in the club for a while, do icebreakers about, you know, where, where are your dream vacations, et cetera. Could be anything. You could talk about anything, right? So what was that? <laughs> I missed it. So learn about your club members and learn about why they're so special, you know, why they are in Toastmasters, what they want to do with their lives, what's happening with them. So we think it's an opportunity to get people to understand that this isn't just a, a speaking organization. This is really a full educational process that's going to help each one of us grow in our interpersonal skills and our leadership skills. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chief. Uh, Madam Chief. 
ambassador, <laughs> and fellow Toastmasters and guests. Why have a, a Pathways orient, Orientation Team? I'm going to answer that question myself. You know, I'm not going to ask the people. It's in a way, it, we know new members who join after Pathways was launched have to go on the Pathways program. But what about the existing members in your club? Do you know if they are working in Pathways? You should. You should know exactly where everyone stands. And that is why to create a Pathways orientation team. One of the first things of the team should be three to five experienced members in your club who are familiar with Pathways in that way. And I would say maybe in reference about four or five people to one person. So just do the math. If you have more than that, you might want to add more people to your orientation team. Now, I have a handout for everything I'm going to be saying, so you don't have to be writing any, any of this down. One of the things that I discovered is that if you go to Club Central, from Toastmasters International site, and click on your club roster, Toastmasters International is going to list all your members of your club and it will list under their names if they've enrolled in Pathways or not. So once you have that information, that is why you need a Pathways orientation team because it will be the more experienced members. I don't want to say older members because I don't consider myself old. <laughs> I joined Toastmasters when I was 12. <laughs> but with, with the orientation team and then being able to follow up, I put together the benefits for the new members and the benefits for the established members. But I'm going to talk more about the benefits for the established members. You know, it's expanded educational opportunities. And it's an opportunity for them to mentor members in your club. And then to help the new members get involved. Now, if you ask the, your experienced members in your club doing this, it'll almost guarantee that they will go on and make sure that they are familiar with the Pathways program and have to pick a path. So definitely is, if you don't know exactly where your club stands and who has enrolled or not, go to that Club Central, click on your roster, and you'll get that information. And then you can follow up through the orientation team to make sure that they get involved. Because if they don't get involved, guess what? By June 2020, June, the end of June, we're going to have a lot of members drop out of Toastmasters. Because if they never got involved in the Pathways program, and then the traditional program expires then, they're going to say, hey, there's nothing left and Toastmasters for me, so bye-bye. So if you don't want a mass exit of your experienced members in a couple of years, you know, in having in, um, the, the orientation team, make sure that it's active and as club officers, maybe put that I would say maybe let the president have that authority of the committee itself and be on that committee to make sure <clears throat> you need to have the feedback of what's going on in your club, you need the feedback of any objections, 
And then just as we offer to sit down with the new members to how to log in uh, pathways, we can sit down with our more experienced members and get them involved and making sure, and that is making sure you ha having a computer going on together, just like we're doing it for the new members. Because I believe that if we do not take this step, we are going to be losing a lot of members in, in District 30 and Toastmasters and National overall. And I don't want to see that. So it's very important to have this pathways orientation team. If you still need some help with this, contact your club guide, your club club guide for pathways. He or she would be able to help you set that up in your club. Again, that could be a topic that comes up on the the weekly call in. If you don't have something set up with your club guide, find out why they're not setting up a weekly call in. So, and I would encourage all the clubs to have that if there's questions, and even encourage, I, in the clubs that, that I am the guide for, I encourage even their members now that were enrolled in Pathways, if they have questions, to get on that conference free call. So make sure you have a pathways orientation team in your club. And it's going to be for all the members in your club, but basically the because the new members have to do it anyway then to make sure that they get involved in this, it'll be a lot easier getting the newer members involved in Pathways than it will be the more experienced members who are set in their ways and don't like change. Nobody likes change. A good way to do that is get them involved with helping to mentor newer people in your club. If you do that, and you work on the team and you have follow-up to the team and you know exactly what they're doing, come the end of June 2020, you won't see any big loss of membership in your club.
and the information is sent out to all of the VPEs, the presidents, and, and then we've even said to send that out to your members. So that's all recorded. It's all training information. And, and I'm on Virginia's call every single time. I mean, I've missed a couple because I had other appointments, but like every time I'm on our call, I learn so much. So we are helping each other and learning because things are migrating, changing. Larry's doing, I'm sure you're learning as you're going too, right? Oh, and there's, yeah. Tony is on mine, I'm on Tony. So. There you yeah. see, there you go. So we're all, we're we're all, all working each together. I mean, Valerie's got a team of 30 people. And um, so there's a lot of good information and newer information since we came to your clubs in January and February. So, you know, take advantage of those recorded messages. They're, they're really helpful. Virginia, you know, she identifies every topic that's discussed on this recording. It's really helpful to me. All right, so what, one thing I want to cover quickly is how to do social media with Pathways and why do you want to do it. Pathways, the electives in Pathways, uh, create a podcast, uh, build a social media presence, write a compelling blog, uh, create rela uh, relations, public relations strategies. Oh my God, you can do the work and get credit in Pathways. <laughs> you can promote your club and get credit in Pathways. And you don't have to wait until you get there. These are electives that are in level three and four. There's your, all of you have been sent out a catalog. It's a 66 page catalog of the 10 paths and each individual project. If you can't find it, we're going to be putting it back up on the on our website. Or you can ask your guide to send it to you. I know there were a few that sent out the, about two weeks ago. They resent it out again. Uh, you, you got it, too. So in that catalog, it's hyperlinked. So all you have to do is go to the very first page, hyperlink each project, and it takes you to the full page describing each project. So you can actually do the social media now according to what I think is 10 blog posts that you have to do. So you can do the social media now to promote your club. Then when you get to level three and four, you give a speech about what your experience was. Wow, and you promoted your club. So there's a lot of different ways, you Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, pardon? <laughs> and it blogs. So there's a lot of different ways that you can promote your, your club. So really, start sitting down with the public relations officer, public uh, the membership officer, and start devising, OK, who cool. get a team. Get a team that's going to do that. And you all can get credit for it. Um, OK, so we're going to put up the links for, for all of the, the handouts today so that you can download them for your, for your club. Now we're going to open it up to a Q&A, and we're just going to do a uh, quick, I guess, five, six minutes Q&A. Yes? You, the question I have, you mentioned you can give the icebreaker now. I had a member, a member last week, give an icebreaker. The only icebreaker forms I had, or evaluation forms, were the old ones, because you could download that from TI and use that from the original legacy manual. No. Can we use that now for this one, or no. do we have to download the new, new the ones? New one. yeah. Okay. The new one. Can we just use the old one as an evaluation and then fill it in to the new one then? Or just, no. do we have to evaluate right away as soon as Because he didn't have the original it? form, so he did the evaluation already. I would, I would, you can transcribe it. You can just transcribe, transcribe and be yeah. done it's and the get same credit. Person. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I then, would imagine, that, 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 I'm just going to answer the way I would. If you're the person that did the evaluation yeah. and you transcribe it to the new form, it's probably good. I don't think it. If he did it and you transcribe it, I don't know that it'd be valid. Yeah. It's, it's getting credit for the speech, and you don't even have to upload it to to the website. Just give, uh, transcribe it to the new, the new one. Okay, any other questions? Do you have to, in order to give that icebreaker, does it have to be at a Toastmasters club, or can it just be evaluated by another Toastmaster, say at another event where you're speaking at? Well, an icebreaker is a little different than most speeches. So I would recommend that the icebreaker is being is done at the Toastmasters meeting because that's not a speech you would give at, you know, an event. But some of the other speeches you can give at an event. Speeches you give at a different event have to be submitted to your VPE to approve an outside meeting presentation. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's another form for that. Right. Okay. But your guide will, will help you go through 
go through that. Joanna? What is a base camp manager? The base camp manager is what you go into when you log in. That's your, your base camp. That you no, will start. It's a piece of that. Oh, the manager and the manager is actually your vice president of education, the president, and the secretary. Yes. So all three. Yes. You mentioned the guide role is, is going away at the end of this month? At uh, the or end of June. Uh, June. Okay, that makes sense. It's One a six sense. month commitment for okay. us. But a lot of the guides are so committed okay. that they're going to be committed. They're going to be they're going to be hanging out. So okay. we're there. Linda, um, just to note, when I was at the conference, at the table, at the Toastmasters table, they did have evaluation forms like in a packet that she had bought from TI. Yeah. So I got a package of those just to keep for our friends instead of, for our club instead of having to download them. To print them up. Well, was that a complete set? <coughs> Excuse me, across, yeah. across all paths? Same well, it was just for the level one. Or for all, oh, okay. Just for like yeah. the, it was just a generic, like the first Yeah, level one's generic. Um, anything, any other questions for our guides? Yeah, we have more of a technical question on navigating through the website. We've got two people that have given their icebreakers. We're not sure where to find the evaluation forms, how to send the request to the people that you want to be evaluating you, what you do with them once you get them, where are they posted, how do you view them. It, it's a, a whole technical website thing that we're having a difficulty with at the Sears Club. Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Uh, I, I, I want to talk about that offline. Okay. Uh, so we can talk about that. Um, I can't answer all of those questions today, right now, but I will answer them for you. So we can get back together and we can answer that for you. Uh, the, when you go into the website and you're going through the first level, as you go through screen by screen by screen into the uh, icebreaker, there's hyperlinks in there. Yeah. Hit it. And it says one is a checklist, one is the icebreaker form, and one is the icebreaker evaluation form. So they're all hyperlinked right through there, and they're in a couple of about three different places in there. So you really can't miss it. We will put them on our website also, and then I'll talk to you about the best of them. Yeah, we were able to find them all. It's just how do you send the request out, and how do you get it posted, the evaluation posted back up to the website. Yeah, you upload it, but it's not, yeah. it's not mandatory. Yeah, that was... No, it's not mandatory. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, all you have to do is, if you have access to a scanner, then you just scan it in and upload it to your own personal cloud. No one can see it. So the VPE won't see it. The only time that I would think that would be an issue would be if you gave the speech at another club, and so you might want to show it to your VPE so they know that you did it. But if it was done in your home club, then they and they saw the person fill out your form and give you a verbal evaluation, then they know that you did it. But a lot of people who download the Icebreaker project, it's in that project. So they can bring that to the meeting, just like about your book. Um, but they don't realize that they still have to go online and go through the That's where we're running into our difficulty. Yeah, so that, and until they finish that, they can't get into the next piece. That's how, that's how they set this up. They don't want people jumping ahead. Now you can go and do a project and put it in a drawer until you get to level five. But especially in the beginning, they feel that this is something that you're building on, right? So you have to give that icebreaker before you give something in level two. So you have to go through yep. step by step. So that may be one of the issues that you're having is that they didn't realize there were other things to do other than the icebreaker. Oh, they do. They just don't know how to get there to do it. So what they have to do is they have to, even if they did it, in hard copy, they have to click through those screens to get to the next I'm, one. I'm not getting my point across. I, that has all been done. You can't figure out what to click on to get it posted where it should be posted. Okay, well, we can talk. Okay, we can well, talk yeah. to the media. Uh, Chuck, you had a question? Well, I just, I just want to make a comment that you don't necessarily need a scanner 
most smartphones okay. will convert it to a, uh, a PDF document. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Kelly, the other hand. I am one of the only goodies. I've been around a long time, and I'm intimidated by having to do this on the computer. I'm almost at my ACG and Advanced Leader Bronze, and I plan to finish them, but not really go for my DTM. Uh, do I have to sign up for Pathways now, or do can I wait until I finish? It never expires. I want to finish. It never expires. Uh, it because so you were a, it's, if you were a member when they launched, or if you're a member, then it's there. So I can wait to, to, yep. to It's to like a credit now. on your account, which okay. is really all it is. You still have to go through the steps, and, and, and it looks like you're going to be charged money for it, and then they apply a credit, and it's zero. So, so Claire can wait. She's, she's going to work through the old program. Yeah, a lot of people and, and that's all going to end 20, you know, end, end of 2020. So she can wait for another year, two years, <coughs> right? And then you can choose your path and go forward. It's going to sit and wait for you because you have a membership number with Toastmasters. It's going to sit and wait for you. Thank you. Yeah, you have it, it may be wise if you're not going to do it for another year and a half that you take the assessment when you get ready to do it because what you're choosing today is based on reality today. Six months or a year from now, you might choose different things in the assessment. Correct. So my belief is if you're going to do, go with the existing system, the legacy system, and finish that out, you might want to wait to do pathways until you're ready to do it. If you're going to attack them both, which is what I mean, Kimberly, right? Yes. Kimberly yeah, is doing, then do them both. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to choose one ahead, path and I'm going to continue on with some other. Uh, uh, two things. One is VPP, um, the initial icebreaker in some things, the VP is not allowed, actually, allowed to give The actual member has to go in and do it themselves. I was told by Kim. Toastmasters International told me when I went to put an icebreaker in for one of the members, no, you, to, VPs don't do it until a certain level. The member has to do it. The first level, the second, I think it's like first and second level? If to go from level one to level two, you have to have right. approval by the VPE or one of these candidates. Okay. But they, they yeah, so, uh, I don't know, there must be okay. because they told me that no, the member has to do it themselves. Has to do what? Has to log in their... Uh, that they could have yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, the member has to do that. Right, not like, not like on the old system where we would go in and... No, right. what you That's do a different is process. You, you go into Club Central yes. when they want the educational award applied. So I'm already on level two in a path, but I didn't submit level one as, a, as an educational award because my club doesn't need it. They already have 10 points. So I'm in level two when it's the next year mm -hmm. and you need four level ones for a point, I will tell my VPE okay. to go ahead and submit it. Those are two, it's a two-step process. So it happens automatically in the pathways. And, and then as you click through, it opens things up. It says you're finished. Your little thing goes to 100%. The one for the entire path goes to 25%. Now you're on level two. But that's totally different than submitting the award through Club Central. Right, right. Right. And so that, the other thing that, that comes across, comes, this question comes up a lot. How did the old roles such as Toastmaster, Vermeer, and all that fit into Pathways? It's out there. It's, it's, it's part of the project. In order to complete level one, you have to give a speech evaluation. Okay, so in the breakdown that you have, because it's not in that, it's not. Yeah, and there's a place where you log the date when you do those. Okay, items. so those are in, mixed in. They're right? all built okay. in. So it's basically a combination of the CC, the CL, and some yeah. advanced manuals. <laughs> right here. Okay. So that uh, other form where you have the breakdown, I. Yeah. All right. That's, that's okay. We're right, because that's yeah. where, so we can see visible, you know, all the different see where, um, you know, these these kind of come into play rather than the CCCL manual. Right. But they do still have roles. But I would advise you. This is very important if you're if you're considering your DCP for next year. 
get people doing level one and have them keep doing CLs. Because you have to have four level ones for a point. For one point. Used to be two Cs. Yes. Equals one point. But you can substitute. I will, that, I will put this document out uh, with the others where um, you can pick from the traditional program and pathways for your DCP. And a CL equates to, help me Mary at a level four or a level five, yeah. right? So how many people in your club do you think are already going to be at a level four or a level <coughs> five? That's, that's like three manuals. Okay, so make sure you're continuing to do your CL manuals for all those roles for the next two years as people move their way up the paths because otherwise you're going to have a hard time, you know, with your DCP. We'll do a, I think we should do a special thing after yeah. the, yeah. the okay. new um, the year starts. Yeah. That, that opportunity is only going to be until 2020. Exactly. Right. So the right. CL is an extra point. Okay. It just pads it up for you. Uh, all right, um, we're getting a little late. What I'd like you to do is write down any questions you have. We can actually get back to you. Uh, we're going to do two speeches. We want to show you a, uh, an icebreaker speech and a vice, a vice an ice, icebreaker, an icebreaker uh, evaluation, and then one of our regular evaluations. Um, so, um, do you want to? Yes. Yeah, we're going to invite. Mr. Jerry Evans. Uh, we're going to take a break here, and we're already beyond. We're already past our time now in terms of taking our break. But before we take our break, quickly, I know some of you are familiar with Toastmasters on Purpose, and a lot of you probably have never. How many of you have ever visited Advanced Club before? Before tonight. So it's like 30% 30, 30 of the room. The difference between Toastmasters on Purpose, when we first started the club back in 2010, it was started with about 75% of district leadership. And we saw a need for, as I'm sure a lot of you witnessed in your regular clubs, for improved evaluations, which translates to improved speaking. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yes. Because all the whitewashed evaluations that a lot of you have heard, and it was great, I can't wait to hear your speech again, and et cetera, in Toastmasters on Purpose, we focus on two things. We focus on speeches and we focus on evaluations. And you'll see demonstrated how we evaluate using the Toastmasters on Purpose evaluation form a little bit later when Hazel delivers her speech. And of course, then you'll compare that with the evaluation for the icebreaker speech. But we meet the first and third Wednesdays in this room here. We'll continue to meet here. In fact, I just got confirmation today for our fellow Toastmaster members. We'll meet in this room through the end of this year, which is good because Harper provides the space for us gratis. We've been very fortunate and blessed to continue to meet at Harper because there's three clubs here. Toastmasters on Purpose is the only advanced club in the Northwest Division, if you, did, if you weren't aware of that. But we focus, as I said, on speeches and evaluations. It also gives you an opportunity to practice longer speeches or presentations to a maximum of 20 minutes and be evaluated on it. And, and Val, since she coaches speakers, it's more like coaching rather than just the traditional feedback because we have two formal evaluations which covers content and delivery and subsets under that. And then we have a round robin discussion. And usually we limit that to you know a minute per person because as you can imagine, if we had all these people in a room, and I gave Larry a minute and a half, and I gave Dan a minute and a half, and Tony and Joe, etc. The meeting would go on forever. So we, you know, ask <coughs> folks to be more specific, 30 seconds to a minute, and then we move around and not have the same thing repeated over and over again because that just gets redundant, and that's not really helpful to Larry if he's a speaker. So we invite you to come <coughs> and visit Top first and third Wednesdays in this room. We meet from seven to nine o'clock so that you can see what a regular meeting is, is like. We put on a lot of these workshops and seminars throughout the course of the year. Topics and subjects will vary. And the whole objective in order for us to do this, we all know what servant leadership is, do we not? Yes. It's for us to serve you as our fellow Toastmaster members and to give back to you as Toastmasters have given to all of us 
seasoned veteran Toastmasters and rookie or newbies alike because that's really the opportunity for us to pay it forward to all of you and to share our knowledge and our experience. The silver sexy fox over here. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't heard that speech, you have to hear that speech. So it's now 8.12, so let's take about a... 10 minute break. 10 minute break, and then we'll come back and you'll hear two speeches and two evaluations. Please help yourself to refreshments and the restrooms are down in the hall and to the left. This is at the bottom of the document, and it shows you from the traditional program and from the Pathways program how you can pick and choose for your for your um, distinguished club program. So think about it. How many members in your club are going to be at level four, or level five? That's a lot of coaches, right? But if they finish a CL. That equals that. Or if they did a CL this year, they could do an ALB if they're an officer, then they just have to do those two presentations from the Duke. The Better Speaker Series and Distinguished or one of those ABC series. So th that's why we encourage people to keep doing their CLs. And it's the, the meeting rules. So why not do that? So think about that. It's going to be on the site, and then in the future, okay, in the future, that will just be the educational part of the DCP. The, the other part of the DCP doesn't change. You still have to get eight new members. You still have to get your dues on time. You still have to look your officers on time. It's all going to be on our club website. So, uh, Roger, I'm going to put you on the spot. When will they be able, maybe a couple days? A couple days. Okay. Roger, I can help you. So it's Wednesday. So. By next Monday, all of these things that I was talking about will be on the top website. Okay? And what's that website again? I'll, I'll email you. Top.toastmasters.org. Thank you. Virginia, how much of what you're going to put on is already on the little flash drive that came from the guide? Do you know? Well, either I have a defective flash drive. Or there wasn't a whole lot on mine. Oh, okay. So there's not a whole lot on there. Yes, I'm trying to shut this off. No, but that was in the presentation. The DCP is in the presentation. Trying to shut it off. Can you have that? Just blank the screen. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Well, that extra few minutes got gave me the chance to get the cookie, get the cookies out between my teeth. We're going to have a speech now from uh, Dr. Hazel Wagner. It's called "Decisions, Decisions, Decisions." Our member, Dr. Harold, uh, Dr. Harold, Dr. Hazel Wagner, is back from her regular snowbird stay for the winter in California, and don't all of us wish we could have been there if we had stayed. She is happy to be here, but the getting back on Saturday was a nightmare. She would love to blame anything and anyone but herself. But looking back, there was a lesson to be learned about not blaming and making better decisions. <laughs> Hazel speaks to audiences about how to make better decisions and would like to share with you a story about learning to take her own advice. So decisions, decisions, decisions. Welcome Dr. Hazel Wagner. Yes, I'm back. But it was a nightmare on Saturday. An absolute nightmare getting back. And you know, it's nice sometimes to blame somebody else or to blame something. Why do we do that? Well, sometimes it makes us feel better that it isn't our fault, that we didn't do something <laughs> stupid. There were times on Saturday that I would like to kick myself, but I'm not very agile that way, so I couldn't quite do it. 
So I had to be able to face some things that were really going on and decide exactly what to do. I had made the arrangements with a taxi to pick me up. Now let me explain a little bit. I, it's not just me. I travel with a cat. Her name is Sophie. Sophie is 16 and a half years old. She's a little bit in kidney failure. She's not so healthy. And she has to go into a little cage and go under the seat in front of me. By the way, it costs more to take her with me than for my own ticket. $125 each way, in case any of you are thinking we might do something like this. So I, on Saturday morning, had a few dilemmas. Here's the first one. If you've ever lived in a place like Southern California, there are a lot of bugs that live there. My mother used to say that the termites were on the hill before they built the house. <laughs> and so I was doing this uh, termite thing, get rid of all the termites in the house, and they discovered on Friday that they missed the spot. And they had to come back on Saturday, but at 10 a.m. I was being picked up. What do I do? Okay, you can come between 7 and 7.30 and you can do it. The phone rings at 6.30. I'm on my way, you know. So I'm up. This person comes. They take care of the termites, hopefully. And now I'm waiting for my taxi to take us. Now, I had arranged for the taxi two or three weeks ahead. Online, you know, it's called 24-7 taxi. And when you call them, you listen to this thing about, we're there for you 24-7. And just like I heard before, it was weekend, and nobody answers the phone till Monday morning. I'm supposed to be picked up on Saturday, right? So I'm calling over and over and over, listening to this supposed thing about 24-7, not there. I finally, it gets to be, close to 10 o'clock, no text. I call my neighbor next door in a pen. Now my neighbor waxes his car every week. He has, I think it's an Audi, I'm not a real car person, but he washes and waxes that car every day. There is not a speck on that car. And I have to beg him to take me to the airport. Now, Sophie's a wonderful little cat, but she gets car sick. <laughs> so, I had put all these things in the uh, cage, you know, to catch it. Sure enough, he's driving us to the airport, and I'm um, hoping he doesn't hear what's happening. Nothing got in his car, but she got car sick. Okay, so we're halfway to the airport, and I'm reaching for my telephone. What happened was, because I had tried all the time to reach this taxi company over and over again, and calling my neighbor, my battery had gone down, and so in the house I plugged it in and I walked out without my phone. There was a time, I'm old enough to remember when we didn't have phones all the time and everywhere. But once we got used to that, panic again, right? It's my fault. It truly is my fault. No, it's that taxi's fault. It's the fact that I had to call them over and over again and they don't answer on Saturday. It's someone else's fault. And I turn to my neighbor who's driving me and say, can we turn around and go back? <laughs> There's no, we're on a toll road. There isn't any way to do that. I said, I'll drive you to the airport and then I'll go back and get it and bring it. You could check it, which was nice of him, right? So I go to the airport, I take care of all the stuff, I pay for Sophie's ticket, the whole thing, and I stand outside where we've agreed to wait until 15 minutes before my plane is supposed to leave. I still have to go through security with my cat. So he didn't get back in time. I end up having to fly back without the telephone, without the way to call about where I'm going to meet my family or anything that when I get back. 
Again, my fault? <coughs> no, it's that taxi's fault. It's the phone that the battery went down, right? We want to blame it. But let's talk about the decision that has to get made. Because we really need to think about what happens when you feel so desperate, even panicky, about what's going on. What are the options? The most important thing we all need to say to ourselves is, what are my options? I can go to the American Airlines counter and ask them if I can use the phone. By the way, I tried that even at the other airport, but my neighbor, if he doesn't recognize the phone number, doesn't answer the phone. <laughs> so you see how one thing after another kind of legend. But I did get back in time. Sophie made it just fine. I got her back home, and I was able to make it back in time to come to this meeting and meet my wonderful friends again that I've, where I've been away for four and a half months. So welcome back into having all of us together. Thank you, everybody. And remember that when you want to make decisions, you don't want to blame other people or other things. You just want to ask, what are my options? What can I do to accomplish this? So thank you very much. myself as an evaluator <laughs> and get a chance to see how we do an evaluation here uh, on the old format for Ghostmasters. Uh, this is a, a, a evaluation on content. Uh, you're so great. I just love your ideas. Uh, sometimes it's hard for us to come up with ideas, but this, your content really followed you from California. Uh, uh, through the cat, <laughs> through the taxi, through the neighbor, all the way to Chicago without the phone. And we all know how it feels if we have misplaced our phone or lost it or it's broken, we go without a phone. Uh, I really liked your effective way of rounding everything back to you could decide whether you want to cross blame on yourself and blame everybody else or take a look at your options. We stress that especially toward the end. Taxi 24-7, I will never make that call. <laughs> Taxi 24-7. <laughs> and your neighbor who never came back with the phone, uh, haven't we all been in a place where, like this incident, where there, you can't do anything about it, you're completely helpless. That's a bad feeling. It's no wonder you want to blame somebody else other than yourself. <laughs> uh, I really like the fact that you got some great laughs. Uh, the cat who gets sick in a vehicle is a um, uh, bless your heart for being able to love that animal enough not to be completely bonkers about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, not the phone's fault, not anybody else's fault. Sixteen-year-old cat traveling. I don't know how many of you travel on an airplane with an animal that's older, uh, but it is no easy task. And very often people are allergic to cats, and if they knew you had one, there would be an incident. So, got you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you back there. Uh, I I really appreciated the framework of it. Always felt like rolling, all the way from California back to Chi Town, back to here tonight, and it was a welcoming thing. I'm back here with all the people that I really have missed for four months. I, I don't know if I have any good critique about what could have been done better. For me, uh, the fast talking is okay because I had the image of everything you presented. It wasn't just a bunch of words that had no images to it because I do much better than images. So I saw the cat vomiting and I saw the, the guy couldn't find the phone or he did or he, whatever he did, he didn't go back. You missed your 15 minutes before the plane takes off and I, I could visualize all of that. So that, I, it was great. I liked it. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> My role? 
Uh, we are now going to have um, Steve Mustaine uh, give a critique on, excuse me, give an evaluation on the delivery. Fellow Toastmasters and especially Hazel. Typically, when speakers come up and when, other people, and when we meet up here at the front of the room, there's usually a big, hearty, strong handshake. Right? In some cultures, that's not really acceptable. It's just a, a gentle handshake. And with some individuals, they might have um, arthritis or, or other physical issues that they've had with their hands. So if there's any one thing I'd like to communicate is to, to be conscious of that when you're shaking hands with, with folks. Okay. How did you know? Bump. Because I did the bump. I tried to shake because hands. Because you did a, you did yeah. a fist I bump. I shake. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Usually here at top, we can we're a little bit a little bit criti more critical than we are at some of the other clubs that I'm in and that we've been in because most of the speakers are pretty they're, they're very good. But tonight, really, I I really have good things to say. Your your topic, which was decisions and not placing blame, your your delivery, your eye contact. Your, your use of hands, your, the way you moved your body were all in sync with your message. And specifically, I, I love the way you just began to be talking about your, your agile body. I mean, you, you, you just kind of, you just kind of like, like a little bit wiggly, right? When you were talking about blame, I think if, if I watched the video without any sound, the way you were walking around like this, I don't think you would have needed to hear what you were saying for people to know that you were communicating that kind of a, a feeling and that kind of emotion. Excellent. <clears throat> I love the way you used your hands. You, you didn't keep them up here. You didn't keep them aside. You, you did a, a nice blend of use of your hands with wonderful gestures, and they were always appropriate. They were big when they needed to be good when they needed to be good and they're, and they're nice and you're contained here when they needed to be contained. Wonderful eye contact. I think if, if, them, if everybody thinks bad, I know as I watched her, she would hold contact with individuals throughout the room very nicely. You weren't darting around. But the things that you did do, you had a napkin in your hand at, at first, so I'm not sure about that. I know she's right. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that you did have some notes, but you used excellent user notes, and I'm sure it was was your your famous mind map. So mm -hmm. that wasn't distracting at all. So that was done very well. Um, that's really. I think you just did an excellent job of of syncing all of all of your delivery into your together with your message. And oh, you did get it. That's what I was wondering. It arrived yeah. today, oh. FedEx. <laughs> Why wasn't that included in the speech? Well, welcome back. <laughs> All right. We doing round robin on this one? Uh, no. no, no, we don't have to. No. Not tonight. No. Our next speaker is our distinguished Toastmaster, Jerry W. Evans. I don't know what the W stands for. What? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry what? Evans? <laughs> I'm sorry, that I don't mean to be disrespectful. Jerry. <laughs> uh, this speech title is A Path to Grow. Jerry will be delivering his icebreaker speech beginning his Pathways presentation, Mastery Journey, and share how it all began and the road he's traveled to get here. 
With its many detours and roadblocks, the journey continues and the path illuminated to continue to learn and grow. Path to Grow, please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Jerry Evans. Three of the most important days of your lives. The day that you were born, the day you discovered why you joined Toastmasters, <laughs> and the third is the day you discover this evening why you're going to start on your path to Pathway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters, one of my favorite sayings is, life is a journey, not a destination. I love that quote because it challenges me to ask myself if life is a destination, where is Jerry going? And this is a question I ask myself in regard to pathways. Now a lot of you who are experienced seasoned veteran Toastmasters, you know the two tracks that we've worked up to this point, which of course is the competent communication track and the competent leadership track. Well, in working those two tracks, now I was given this option of, you have 10 paths. There's 59 projects. There's 300 competencies. Do I want to step onto this path? Do I want to shed a floodlight, a beacon on it to traverse this path? And that's the question I ask myself. The other question I asked myself, more in the terms of a quote, was, don't go where the path may lead but instead go where there is no path and blaze a trail. <clears throat> but how am I going to blaze this trail? How am I going to travel this path? So as you've heard this evening, all the different paths, and now it's a matter of selecting which path am I going to start traveling on. So looking through all those paths, taking the assess like some assessments like some of you have, I chose Presentation Mastery. Not that I'm counting, but my path up to this point has been 3,592 days. <laughs> <laughs> or let me translate that another way. It's been nine years, ten months, and one day. To the day. In July, I'll celebrate a decade in Toastmasters. Not as much as my sexy silver fox fellow Toastmaster, Val Roman, but in those almost ten years of traveling this path, I've realized that I need something else to challenge myself. And that was in the form of Pathways. Because I could continue doing, those of us who have been you know, pre-Pathways or the Legacy Program, continue to do the CL, the CL, uh, CC, the CL, the Advanced Manual for the next almost two years. But I thought, I want a new challenge. I'm still going to work the current program, but start this new path on Pathways. Because I think that one of the most dangerous places any of us can reside in, it's called the CZ zone. Some of you know it better as called the comfort zone. But really, the path to grow begins when we step outside of that comfort zone. Because some of you in previous speeches that I've given, comfort zone is a beautiful place. But unfortunately, nothing ever grows there. And I decided I want to continue to grow, I want to continue to learn, because unlike Ponce de Leon, who discovered the Fountain of Youth, I discovered the Fountain of Youth in Toastmasters. And some of you know that I do like acronyms, and it's a simple three-letter acronym, it's called ABL. And that stands for Always Be Learning. And that will keep us young, that will keep us vibrant, that will keep us energetic. Because the more that we learn, the more that we grow. One of the most profound philosophers that I follow all the time, because I think that his, his philosophical wisdom, he simplifies it in a way that every single one of us can understand. And that profound philosopher is Dr. Seuss. <laughs> and I keep this in my office, and I look at it every single morning, because I write every morning. I'm just going to continue to grow. And it simply says, you have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer your life any direction you choose. All oh, the places you'll go and the ways you'll grow, but you have to go in order to grow. 
So in order for me to traverse this path, I decided in order for me to grow, I had to continue on this new path called Pathways and embrace it because change, there are only two people that like change. That's a toll booth collector <laughs> and a baby with a wet diaper. <laughs> so those of us who embrace that change, that's really where my path to grow continues and will continue. Because there's so much to continue to learn, even after Mary Ann Rockhill, who's been in Toastmasters over 20-some years, and Bob, 30-something years, and some of you other veteran seasoned Toastmasters, when we, the day that we stop learning, then the path to grow stops. As I said in the beginning of my speech, life is a journey, not a destination. I would challenge all of you to continue and embrace this path to grow, because even though right now you may be sort of resistant to it, the more that you embrace it, the more that you find out about it, you'll find out, as I said to Z during the break, it's not all that complicated. It really breaks down to the fundamentals and bases of communication and leadership. And that's all contained in those 10 paths, those 59 projects, and 300 competencies. If you can't find something out of 300 competencies to wrap your arms around, and start on your path to grow, don't go where the path may lead, but instead, blaze a new trail, cut a new path. That'll be your path to grow. Madam Toastmaster.
everybody for coming out on such a crazy windy night. I, I uh, want to uh, thank our panel and our chief ambassador for putting all this together and for being so consistent and supportive to all the clubs. And I want to thank all the clubs for being so receptive to everybody. So really, really appreciate it. If uh, the chief ambassador has asked me to say, if you would like a Pathways Guide or Ambassador to come out to your club to give some additional information, we are happy to do that. So if you are more than welcome to contact me, Kimberly Barrett, 847-910-6414, or uh, my, na my name and number is on the site for the Chief Ambassador. If you don't know your guide or you want someone else to come out, we're happy to do that. Um, we are going to be around for the next uh, couple of months, right? Um, in addition, uh, as Vice President of Education for TOP, we typically have some kind of educational speech each uh, meeting that we have. So they're not all these big ones, but they can be all different sizes mm -hmm. and different topics that are typically helpful. And uh, Tim is fantastic in recording our meetings for us, educational. We also would love to have you join our club if you're interested. Please, uh, Bob Sims is our our uh, vice president of membership and anyone in the club can talk with you too but we are we'd love to have all you join we have some new members here Suzanne and uh, appreciate that and Z joined here just recently so very good so I'm gonna turn it over to Roger Matthews our president to close it out for the evening new? Oh, yeah. Raise your hand if you learned something great. Yes. Okay, let's go right around the room and tell us what you learned. Uh, no. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> but I'd love to hear one or two, three people maybe, did you, what ideas did you pick up tonight? Did you learn anything about making decisions? <laughs> did you learn anything about stepping out of your comfort zone? Did you learn anything about pathways? Anybody? And about Dr. Seuss. Okay. And about Dr. Seuss. Tim. I learned that I got to make a good decision and that I should be starting this pathway soon and not be stuck just doing the old path. I still got a DTM to do, but I can probably do it. And maybe with a little bit of an additional oomph from pathways, it might just help complete the thing. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Excellent. I learned one, one really great thing that I learned from Jen tonight. If you're a legacy member, <laughs> you can pick a topic in your icebreaker and talk about why you chose that path. What a great idea. I mean, I thought I would have to come up here and say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm this, <laughs> whatever. But there's a lot of ways to do an icebreaker. Yes. And, and you learned it several tonight. Jerry demonstrated a, a way. Jen talked about some ways you could do your icebreaker. So, Let's jump in and have a great time. So before we go, uh, come back to another meeting. If you'd like to have some more information, you can see Bob Sims afterwards uh, to learn a little bit more about Tom. And you'll find that uh, this is an amazing club. We hope you come back and enjoy the club another time. Tim, one last comment. If there's no objection, I will post the entire meeting on our homepage, probably within the next day or two. So just watch for it. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay, great. As the immediate past president, it's my job to get the slate going for our club election. So for all of you that are current members, I need to know what office you're interested in. So please contact me and also our election will be at our next meeting. So we need to have a quorum. Thanks, Jim. And if any of you didn't get your name on the list in the back, please do so because uh, we'll put, it, put you on our mailing list so that we can remind you of future events, future uh, training sessions, and uh, just some general information about TOP. So please make sure you're on the list and please write legibly so that we can make sure that we get you on the list. Yes, e email, email as well as your name. So thank you all for coming. We'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.